what is gaslighting abuse? Um, you may have heard this term before and you're not quite sure what it is, so we're gonna dive in a little bit to talk about what it is and how to handle it. Um, so gaslighting, tactic, strategy, it's some kind of mechanism used by very often powerful people who are sometimes pretty manipulative to control others, to get others to question themselves and essentially anchor um, some kind of need of validation from the abuser. So when you think about like cult leaders, narcissists, dictators, these are often individuals that really successfully and effectively use gaslighting as a form of abuse on other people. Being the victim of gaslighting abuse is difficult, it's challenging, and sometimes you're not even aware that it's happening. So here's an analogy to help better explain this. Some of us have heard this analogy many times. When you think about putting a small creature into a pot of water and slowly bringing it up to a boil, oftentimes the creature has no idea what's happening to it because it's such a gradual movement of temperature. And finally, it's too late. It's very different than dropping a creature into a boiling pot of water where they instantly know that something bad is happening. So this is the nature of gaslighting abuse. It's um, a gradual, a series of events, often seemingly innocuous and small in the moment, but over time, it can turn into a very impactful in a negative way, form of abuse to control people. So what is it that we're looking for that people that use this strategy um, to control? So people that gaslight, they are often liars. They often just don't tell the truth. There's not much alignment between their actions and their words. So it's really important to be looking at their actions more so than their words because they will tell you anything to control you, right? To make you feel good sometimes. Um, so for instance, you might notice that somebody that does this to you can often berate you or put you down and then other times will use some kind of positive reinforcement like praise or even complimenting something that you've done. So this can lead to a lot of confusion. Um, this can lead to you just really seeking out that approval from this person more times than not because you've gotten it before in some strange way. Um, a big tip on that is looking at the thing that they're praising or complimenting you on. Oftentimes it's something that has also benefited them. People that gaslight are typically not dumb individuals. In fact, a lot of times they're very intelligent, really smart, and that's how they're able to successfully control other people. Um, so something that you might notice an abuser doing is uh, projecting. So what is this concept of projecting? So for an example, maybe somebody um, heavily uses substances and you find that that person is often uh, accusing other people of having a problem with substances. So this is the idea of projecting. Um, and it's very common for people that gaslight to project. They are doing something that's probably not the best for themselves or for other people, but they often accuse other people or blame other people of doing that very same thing. Um, other things to be looking for are that they might try to make you feel like you're isolated. So either they're gonna try to turn people in your life against you, or they're gonna make you think that they have turned people in your life against you. So they might say that, you know, somebody important to you doesn't think that you'll ever amount to anything, or they're really pretty good at quickly identifying who's important in your life and what is important in your life and using that as some kind of ammunition to make you feel more isolated and alone. This is a tactic to make you think that you don't have anybody to turn to, that you have to second guess your own gut instincts and your feelings. Something else that people that gaslight will do is project. So what is this idea of projecting? An example is perhaps an individual that heavily uses substance is often accusing and blaming other people in their life that they have a problem with substances. So the general concept is um, somebody that's often attacking you for doing something, but they themselves do that very same thing all the time. Um, other things to remember are that people that gaslight, these abusers are often pretty intelligent and smart, and this is how they are successfully able to control so many people. Um, so they're pretty good at quickly identifying what and who is important to you, and they will use this to attack you. So what I mean by that, um, they may, 
you know, say things about people that you care about that are simply not true. So they might say that your mom had told them in the past that she doesn't think that you're important or that a teacher that you greatly admired had said that you will never amount to anything. Um, so it's really important to remember something I said earlier is that gaslight abusers lie. They lie to you and a lot of the things that they say are simply not true. Um, another tactic and strategy is to turn people against you or make you think that they've turned people against you. So this is a lot of he said, she said. They might tell you things like people that you care about don't care about you. Um, isolating you or at least making you feel like you're isolated is a great way for someone to be able to control you because you feel like you're alone, that you have to second guess yourself and who you can turn to or who you can trust. So how are we supposed to handle this if you find that you may be a victim of gaslight abuse? Um, being cognizant and understanding some of these strategies that we just talked about is a great way to prevent yourself from falling into the tight grasp of one of these abusers. If you find that you're already in there, there are some things to be thinking about. Um, Gaslight abusers often will deny that they said something, uh, meaning they're gonna make you second guess your memory. So especially in like a workplace environment, having physical written records of things will help you maintain um, some kind of solid memory that you have of them saying something to you or you saying something to them. Um, other things that can be helpful are seeking out support. So talking to other people that aren't involved in this drama, some kind of outside objective perspective to help you see whether you know, the interaction feels normal to them or it's something that could be a red flag of something. Um, you know, having a really strong sense of self and building your confidence is also a really good way to better trust your gut and your instincts when it comes to um, this kind of abuse that could be happening to you. Um, and at the end of the day, we can't really expect any kind of victim of anything to be responsible to make the abuse stop. But there are things that you can do um, to combat some of the things that are happening, such as, like I said, seeking out support, um, building on your self-confidence, learning about and practicing strategies to help you become a direct and assertive communicator in order to make sure you're not being stepped all over. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll find a lot more content on a variety of mental health topics. And if you're interested in learning more about online counseling, please click the link to betterhelp.com below.